Hello friends. Today I'm playing with, I'm going to play with some uh, tulips. I'm seeing them start to come out pretty soon and I thought they might be kind of fun. I was playing with some of my My Lane colors I've got here and my little My Lane palette. It's a student palette. I love these colors. They, um, the light fatness, light fastness in them means just they're fading uh, quality, which um, I don't think that's necessarily a quality, but uh, their light fastness isn't very uh, great compared to like Winsor Newton, but their colors are absolutely beautiful. I think the price point is fabulous for student beginners. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and give them a little spray here to get them activated. And um, so that's what I'm using today. And then I'm going to be using my 8 Velvet Touch. You know, I love it. That's my fave. And let's see what else. Oh, my Artisto pads. Um, let's find the cover here. You guys are very familiar with those. I love these. Another great beginner um, art supply because they're reasonable. You get a whole three pack, I think, for $20. And you can even tear them out. Um, if you do want to gift them. The colors I'm going to be using today are going to be the Deep Violet, um, Fresh Purple. Um, I'm still kind of debating on the Violet Red. It's a beautiful color, but it kind of goes more into the warmer side of the color wheel um, because it's got a little bit of red in it. So I'm kind of debating on that one. I want to try and stick up here in the cool colors. Um, and the way I kind of define the, the warm and cool colors is the cool colors are have look like they have more of the colors of like the ocean, those cooling colors. And the more you start getting into the reds and oranges and yellows, that side of the color wheel, you're going more into like sun colors, warm, hot colors. So I'm trying to stick with this side of the color wheel, which is all the greens and blue greens and blues and blue violets. I think they're really pretty. So this is kind of my color palette. Um, I'll be playing with some of the greens here, but let's go ahead and get started. What I wanna do is, um, let me grab a pencil here and my eraser, okay. Um, I'm just using a pencil I have sitting here on my desk, but actually I think I'm going to use my black one. They're a little bit easier to draw with. So basically the shape of a, a easy tulip is going to be something like this, almost a teardrop like that. And then you're going to have another one coming out over here. I mean, I'm, I'm very much simplifying these. And then let's see, um, maybe one in here like that. You might even have some little ones in the back. Let's do another one coming out here like that. And mine in the middle and maybe these two little ones here. And the tulips, that I get, they typically have quite a fat stem. So that's how I'm going to do mine. And let's just maybe put one more over here, like this. There we go. Okay. Now, interesting, my tulips really opened up the other day and they were actually quite large. I was a little bit surprised how much they opened up. So those are gonna be my tulips. With my eight brush, I'm going to be using the tip of my brush and going into the wider belly of my brush. I've also got my two uh, containers of water. I'm, I'm using actually my mead and ceramic, so it's got my wash side and my rinse side. And I've got some paints here in my palette. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Again, I wanna use some of these pretty reds and violets and purples here. I love, these are my almost my favorite colors besides the Rose Matter in the uh, My Lang palette. So I'm just gonna put some of that on here. And this first purple, 
I swatched these. So my first purple I'm using is this one right here. Now that's a very dark value, so I might just want to pull some of that out like that. I'm going to go ahead. I've got it on my palette here already. Okay. And I want to have my next color ready, which is, they call it fresh purple. I kind of call it like a violet. Um, let me move my brushes here. And let's just put that right here. It's very close to um, the bluer violet. This one's got a little bit more blue in it. But this has a bit more, I'd say, red. And then we'll go into that beautiful red violet, which I love. That's kind of another very favorite color of mine. Look at how beautiful that is. Hopefully you can see that. Let me move my water up. I've also got my paper towel here to just dab my brush on. Okay, so those will be my three colors I use. Now something I'm gonna do here is, I'll do two things. I'm gonna do the first um, little um, flower here with a brush stroke. So I'm gonna create it with a brush stroke. I'm gonna use the tip of my brush and then get wide. So point, pressing in, and I'm using the side of my brush. Somebody asked me that about the other day because that way I can cover more space. And that's really why I typically do it. If I wanna create a whole petal with one brush stroke instead of two, just not for any reason necessarily, I will use the side of my brush. So let's just do that again. Point and pressing the side of my brush. So I've got my brush kind of horizontal and then coming around here. And if you notice, I left some white space in there. And then I'm gonna let that dry. And before it dries too much, I'm actually gonna go into my green. And I swatched some greens here too. So I think the green I might wanna use, let's go into, let's just really get some bright colors going here. So this is their emerald green. Just using the tip of my brush. I'm holding my brush upright, vertical. There we go. Look at that, very easy. And then I'll take a damp brush and just pick up a little bit of that. So I love how it blended in with my purple. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one over here, but what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna get it wet first, just cause I wanna play. Now I'm just creating a shine. And again, look at, I'm using this side of my brush. So the side of my brush, meaning I'm holding it this way instead of point, press, point, I'm holding it sideways because now I can use the whole side of my brush. There we go. And then let's just drop in some of this beautiful color. And it's just really a different look. Now I can use my paper and kind of mix it around. And then I'm going to grab, I just grabbed some water and look at how quick my, my water already got turned purple. Oh, I was gonna show you. So when I rinse, I wash and rinse my brush, which here I'm using the same color, so it's not a big deal. And just tapping off and pick up some of those other colors and let's just dab them in there. and get some fun mixes. So that kind of shows you this is more like a wash and this is more like that wet and wet that I really love. So rinsing my brush again, because I just want to put some water on there. Point, press, and I'm leaving a white space, otherwise this whole thing would combine together. And this is really my favorite way to paint is wet and wet, <clears throat> but when I'm laying down that water, it's just shiny. There's no puddles in there. And then let me pick up some of my paint again. 
oh, I just love that, how it moves. And I'm really trusting the watercolors to kind of do their thing, which I love doing. And then dabbing in there because you just get colors and mixes and allowing my paints to mix on my paper that I, I couldn't really mix because they're mixing on the paper. Now I'm gonna go in, that's a little bit too much water. It's puddling just a bit. So look at how much came off my brush. Now I can go in there and I'm going to use the tip of this number eight and make that a little darker in the back. There we go. Go into that again, pick up some of that purple. Might wanna pick up a little bit more of that. And because this part of the flower is in the back, I wanna make it a little bit darker in value. So I'm using a darker value, meaning it's more like 80% pigment, 20% water. And look at the beautiful spread I have there. I wanna go in and do that um, stem again before this dries because I wanna get it to blend with my purple. So just touching in, letting it spread, and then bringing that down. There we go. And I can even go into this with maybe a darker green. And add that in. I love my olive green. So I always like adding some of that into my stems. And there you go, look at that pretty color. Okay. Now we have one more here. So I'll just go in and let's see. Let's do that one. I think I'll use that violet red, <clears throat> which I really love. And let's see, I want to do the wet and wet again, just because I love that washy look. This is a little bit more drier. So wetting my brush, if you need to tap it off, look at all that water that comes off and just lay down. You don't want any puddle there, just shiny. This nice, beautiful shine. There we go. And again, tap in. And you can blow on this or move your paper. There we go. And just that beautiful, beautiful spread that you get with watercolors. I'm gonna go into the other side, leaving a white space in between those. And I am kind of using the side of my brush here. Just like that. And then I'll touch in with maybe that color. So beautiful. Oh, I love these watercolors. They have the prettiest pinks. and just letting them sit and do what they're gonna do. So there you go, I might even tap in some of that darker purple into here, down maybe at the base. And at this point you can kind of play with it. So I rinsed my brush and it's a little bit damp. And I'll just maybe pick up some of that. You could even do that here if you wanted to add a little shine. Oh, oh. And now I'm gonna go into, oh, you know what? Let's do that green stem. There we go, just using the very tip of my brush, really, really light pressure. So I'm only engaging the tip of my brush. And I wanna add a tiny bit of that darker green just for some interest like that. And now I'll go back and color in those little petals in the back. So I'm gonna use a pretty strong color. 
Strong color meaning um, a darker value, 80% paint, 20% water. And I always, these are kind of companions for me, eight and six, so I might even want to use that to get into this smaller space. Don't want to touch the surrounding petals because it might blend in just like that. And I think I am going to use my smaller brush to get into the back there. But I have to be really careful here. I'm kind of being dangerous going in there while that's wet. Now the other thing I wanna do here is just create a little glaze over this one. So again, using the side of my brush, point, press, Look how pretty. Point, press, like that, and it just creates this nice glaze. We could do that in here. Point, press, add some more color. I mean, look at these things are really popping. Again, being very careful not to go in and touch your wet on wet because it will blend and kind of create a big mess. Be a little bit of a glaze right there. And now I'm gonna go in and do some of those big wide stroke leaves. And the brush stroke for that is, that I'm gonna use anyway, feel like point, side of my brush, like that. You could even do point, side of your brush, like that. So those are gonna be the type of leaves I use, and then I can go into it, and maybe drop in some lighter greens or some blues, but look how pretty, okay. Let's pick up some of that blue-green, which I believe they're referring to as um, emerald green. Really vibrant. Okay, point, press, like that. Isn't that pretty? Point, press, like that. So I lift up onto the tip there. And we can add in some of our other greens, maybe some of the tree green or the hooker's green would be really pretty. Get a little bit of that on my palette and some water and I wanna do this, oh, I just went into the wrong color. Before it dries too much. And point press, oh, those colors are so pretty together. Point press and just let them blend. Look how beautiful that is. Ugh, so pretty. And now let's go into this one. Point press. Maybe add in a dark green one. Point press. Now here I'm using that point press press technique. So I'm not using the side of my brush because I don't want as much width. So I just use the point pressing into my brush, opening the belly and back up on my point. Now right here, let's see, let's add in, uh, how about if we have a short one back in here? Point press and just tuck that in like that. Okay, and that's probably enough of these little leaves. I really like to make my um, tulip leaves kind of long and flowy like that. I think it's really pretty. And we could even go in if you wanted to, hopefully I don't mess this up now, and I just have a damp brush. So I rinsed my brush, 
I'm tapping it off and I'm just gonna go in and touch the side there. Now it's puddling a little bit, so I'm gonna pick some of that up. And I just want to get some random kind of background in here. So a damp brush, grabbing some of that color and spreading it up. Now I want to rinse that water. So rinse my brush. And this is pretty courageous because these colors are really bright. Do the same here with that green. And I don't want to have that hard edge, so I just went in there with that, a damp brush, and just kind of making those a little softer. There we go. And look at this fun background. Now, if you wait too long, this might dry. Damp brush, damp clean brush. There you go. And maybe some down here. And going in with that clean brush. And now we don't want this completely white in the middle, so I'm just gonna go in and pull that around. So there you go. I think that kind of made it really abstracty. I could even add in some little splatters in the background. And just really, you know, as I always say, have fun with these. Just play and experiment. I always like to get um, a very uh, washy look. So that's kind of where I'm coming from on these. There we go. And I don't want those brush strokes, so I go in with a damp brush and just kind of pick those up. But I think that's quite fun. Another little tip here would be to maybe use some pen and ink because I'm just so into that right now. I kind of go through phases. Um, let's see, do I have my pen here? My Ohuhu pen, which I'm loving. And I've been really playing with the 07, which I don't see in here. So I'm gonna use the 0.8. And this might be a little wet. I could pull out my dryer. So what I love, it's got this wonderful abstract feel, but yet I'm going in and I'm kind of defining it. And one of the things, by the way, I love about these Ohuhu markers is they dry really, really quickly. So I kind of appreciate that. And they're doing quite well over wet paint. Now we'll find out if that ends up ruining the marker, but I hope not. This is quite wet, so I'm kind of being careful in here, but I feel like I wanted to find those little tulip lines. And most times when I'm outlining, I will kind of go abstract and outside the lines. I think that's really fun. So we've covered brush strokes here. And some wet and wet. And we did a little bit of glazing which is fun. So then we kind of 
ended it with these pen and ink touches. So look how pretty. I'm gonna do some cards with this. And we also did that fun background. So you really could have stopped at any point here and stopped and not done the pen and ink. You could have stopped and not done that beautiful washi background. It's up to you. Do what you kind of feel. And there we go. I hope you give it a try. It's so much fun and I love these colors. They're all um, pretty much on the cooler side. I have a little bit of that red violet, which has a little bit warmer because it's bringing in a little red, but I think it still goes quite well with these three colors. And typically, um, those are right next to each other. So when you choose two or three colors next to each other, it's gonna have this soft flow. Now I did add in the pop of contrast with the greens. They're almost opposite on the color wheel, which means that they're complementary to each other and they're gonna have that contrast. But I think it works well here. You could always add in a tiny bit of purple, which I love to do on my leaves. I love bringing in a little bit of the flower color. So I just got, I do it when these are dry though, because if they mix together, being opposites on the color wheel, they're gonna create a mud. So I'm just creating a very light wash and maybe on the colors, on the, the leaves on the bottom, I'm just going to go over and add a tiny bit of this. And look at how all of a sudden it kind of unifies all of this. I think that's just lovely. And I love putting my flower colors into my leaves. I think it's unique and kind of fun. So there you go. I hope you guys give this a try and um, I will see you all soon. Bye.